Well, in this game, we're going to look at um, a game I had at the British Chess Championships. Um, it's the only game I managed to lose. It was against Lawrence Trent. Um, I'm not sure which round it was. Probably round five, if I remember correctly. Um, it was a tough game. Uh, Lawrence played really well, defended brilliantly. Uh, a very new, a unique idea. He put his queen on a1, which um, is very odd because it looks like it's completely shut out of the game. But it um, worked as a perfectly defending piece. Um, I thought I was doing very well at the time, so I was very disappointed after the game, so I thought the attack was going to come through with flying colours. Unfortunately, as these things sometimes happen, as it didn't, it just fell apart. Uh, but let's move on to the game anyway. So, it started e4. And now I played e c5, trying to get a Sicilian. White's now played knight f3. I went d6, d4, c takes d4. And here Lawrence played queen takes d4. When I was preparing for the game in the morning, I didn't expect Lawrence to play a main line Sicilian because he, he kind of tends to avoid these. He plays an early bishop b5 check, lots of other little sidelines. The reason for this is is that um, he's, he hasn't really got a lot of time to do a lot of prep at home. I think he's more interested in getting a job and stuff like that. He's you know he's not a proper chess professional. He's a very talented player and you know a brilliant player to come across uh, to play against. But he, he tries to avoid the main line, which you know is just a good idea a lot of the time. You don't have to play the main line, you know, not all the time. You can you can play sidelines and just fight from early stage, which is exactly what he does here. Um, it look, it's a funny move, queen d4, because it looks like I can attack that queen in a number of ways, maybe a knight c6, possibly with e5, um, but it's not so easy to kick it away. Um, um, I've got two two main moves here. The move I play, which is knight c6, the other main move is a6, uh, which stops a bishop b5, and I'm going to go knight c6 next move, gaining a tempo. This position, white can either continue c4, trying to get a grip on the central squares, or he can play knight to c3, um, just developing a piece. I decided to play against this. I mean, I couldn't remember my theory very well here, but knight c6, I know, is a normal move. It's developing a piece, attacking the queen. Black and white now pin that knight, bishop b5, which is the only sensible move. I got out the pin, bishop d7. White captured the knight. I now took back with a bishop on c6. In the past, I made the mistake of playing pawn takes b6. Now, this is actually an error. It looks a good, like a good idea because you're getting pawns in the centre of the board, but you're neglecting your development, and White's got a lot of space here. It's actually quite hard for Black to get his piece out in this position. One game I had against Mark Heidenfeld at Bum Ratty Tournament about a year ago continued Castle's Kingside, and now I played e5. Mark played queen d3. I went bishop e7. If I go knight f6 here, sometimes I have to be a little bit worried about bishop g5. Um, bishop e7, and then white can take on f6. If I take the bishop, then... Sorry, if I take the bishop, then queen takes d6, winning a pawn. So that's why I went bishop e7 first. And now the game continues c4, getting the grip on d5 square. Queen c7, knight c3, h6, again stopping bishop g5. Bishop e3, knight f6, and now white played a good move, he went c5. And after I took that pawn, he played knight a4, and he had a better position here. So I wanted to avoid all this kind of thing, it's a bit boring as well. I mean, it's much more fun after bishop takes c6, because generally white castles queen side, I castle king side, and you get a bit of action. So white continued, knight c3. I now played knight to f6. e6 would transpose after bishop g5, knight f6. So it doesn't really matter on the move order, but knight f6 is a very sensible move. White has now moved his bishop to the most active square, bishop to g5. I didn't want to allow him to double my pawns in f6, so I have to move my e-pawn. Moving it to e5 is a bit too far because it gives me a massive square. Well, it gives white a massive square and d5 he can land a piece on. So pawn to e6 is a sensible move. Now white castle queenside with aggressive attentions, maybe he's going to throw the pawns at me. But I was quite happy to see this at the time as well, because it obviously unbalances the game, gives me good chances to uh, attack on the queen side as well. I continued bishop e7, developing, rook h e1. I expect white can also play some plan with h4 here, um, and just the idea of trying to get on with things. Um, but rook h1 can't be a bad move, putting a rook in the centre of the board. I castled, just trying to get out of the way of any knight d5 ideas. White's now shuffled his king over, king b1. 
I went queen c7. I can. This position was quite quite important to me. I had a long think here because um, I couldn't remember the theory. I remember there were some games where Black played queen a5 here, which again looks like a sensible move. But um, the queen is very hard to get an attack going here. Okay, maybe I want to play b5 at some point, but it kind of loosens up my d6 square. Queen c7 is a very solid sort of uh, option. I could put a queen on the half open c file. Hopefully, it'll open up at some point. Give a bit of extra protection to d6. Now, White played a move which actually my girlfriend plays here, uh, Queen D2. Um, and the only experience I got from this is actually watching my girlfriend's games, Alexandra Wilson. Um, she, she plays Queen D2 quite often with the idea of uh, putting a knight on D4. And I know she has very good results there, so I really don't want to lose badly here. Um, and I had a long think what I should do here, because Knight D4 is a bit annoying. Black White wants to play Knight D4, followed by F4, E5. So I've got to try to create some counterplay here. Okay, I can play a6 and b5, but I wanted to I wanted to try to play play something a bit unique here. So again, I had a long think. I came up with an interesting idea. Went rook fd8, which sometimes helps defend the pawn, threatening d5, knight d4. Now I play b5, which is a very interesting move. It's a pawn sack line, but I wanted to attack in this game. I never like defending. Defending's boring. Let's attack. Attack is much more fun. Put your opponent under pressure. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, Lawrence just soaked up my pressure, took my pieces and won the game, which uh, unfortunately does happen um, occasionally. Um, only occasionally, I hope, because otherwise I would probably be about 1,800 strength if everyone just took my pieces and won. But in this position, OK, um, F, well, I can play F4 here, but then at least I... Well, actually, f is a mistake, sorry, because I go B4. The knight moves, let's say knight e2, knight takes, or bishop takes e4, one of these two moves, and black should be winning. He's got a pawn, a massive centre. So white really has to take the sacrifice, and knight takes pawn, bishop takes knight, knight takes bishop, attacking my queen, and I went queen c5. But another interesting option in this position was queen b7. Um, just getting on the b file as quickly as possible, maybe this is a slight improvement. For example, what does, what does white do here? And if he moves the knight, I go rook b8. Um, so this this might have been a better idea. If I get this again, I'll probably give this a punt. But I play queen c5, and now white played knight to c3. I was a bit more worried about another option here. Let's just have a look. I mean, knight d4 looks like a normal move, but this is a mistake because I've got the tactic the knight takes e4. This is the reason I put my queen on c5, because now I'm hitting the bishop on g5 with the queen and my bishop. So, for example, rook takes, bishop takes f4, bishop f6. I've got a massive position here. My bishop is so strong, I've got open b and c files to attack that white king along. So, um, white really has to play something else here. But the move I was a bit more concerned about was bishop takes f6. Which, okay, gives me a monster bishop, but let's see what happens if white takes this other pawn. And now here, what do I do here? Well, I was originally attending rook b8. If I go queen e5, then white can play c3. And it's not clear what I do. I don't really want to take on h2. Looks a bit passive. So I played rook... If I, I, mean, I was playing, intending to play rook b8. And now if white plays b3, if I go queen e5, threatening mate, white goes c3. And he's just, he just wants to take the queens off. He can go take the queens off. He's doing very well. I've got to try to keep the queens on this position. Bishop e7 looks natural. But the problem with this move is knight to c4. And, um, well, you know, what do I do? He's attacking my queen. If I take his, he takes my queen. The queens are coming off. Okay, I could take on h2 again. But his position looks quite solid here. So maybe he should have played bishop takes f6 in that position. But going back, he went knight to c3. So now I just continue with normal developing moves. Rook to b8. King to a1. Now this is a very start of a very good plan here. King to a1. He needs to give extra protection to the b2 square. So king to a1 prepares rook b1. He's got to try to play these um, defensive moves, and he played very well defensively. A very impressive defensive display. Um, so okay, let's see what happened. I went h6, kicking the bishop away. Um, bishop to h4. If he moves the bishop anywhere else, let's say he moves bishop to e3. Then I was going to play queen to b4, and if something like rook b1, and now I can play my knight to d7. By keeping his bishop on the h4, d8 diagonal, it stops this right there. This is a very strong maneuver in knight d7. This is coming to e5, then to c4, or sometimes my bishop's coming to f6. So he doesn't really want to allow my knight to come in the game so quickly. So his idea of playing bishop h4 is definitely the correct move. Now I went queen to b4. And then this is another critical point in the game. I'm sure 90% of players here would play rook to b1, which looks like a very sensible move. Defending mate, 
It looks like one of the only moves even. But the problem with this is that his A2 square, at a later point, could become under a lot of attack here. It's not. It's only defended by his knight. A lot of times in these variations, black goes rook to B6, rook to A6, and at some point, rook takes A2. you will be amazed how many times this happens in the, in the, the Sicilian dragon. So what white actually played here, he came with a genius idea, he went queen to C1. Exclamation mark. With the idea of playing queen to B1 at a later stage. A crazy move. But it defends a2 with his queen, and he defends b2 and he defends c2. The queen on b1 looks very passive, but he just defends everything, and it's very hard for me to get through. So let's continue anyway. I went rook, move another rook into the game. Rook d to c8. Fred in rook takes c3 with eventual checkmate here. So white is forced to defend the knight on c3. So he went rook to d3, and I went to d5. And I was feeling very confident at this point. I was thinking, you know, I'll be on a good score in a British, got white in the next game. I was starting to get a bit too cocky. My head was starting to float away somewhere where it shouldn't have been. Because um, the reason I was confident, my bishop now is coming into the game. I'm attacking the centre. Um, maybe d4 becomes an option. d takes e4 becomes an option. Everything looked very good here. But it's not so clear. And white just kept defending with the best moves. He played f3. He has to defend this pawn on e4. He couldn't take on d5 last week, so I whip his bishop off. Um, now I went rook to b6 with the idea of playing rook to a6, checkmate on a2. Very sensible plan. Um, I could have tried d4, but after knight e2, it's, it's not clear what I do. For example, e5, he goes f4 with a messy position, but I didn't think his chances were any worse in this position. So hence I played rook to b6. Again, he plays the best move. He moves his bishop now back into the game. Bishop to f2. Now, this is where I probably made a mistake. I got too carried away here. I played rook a6, which was my original idea. But maybe a better idea was bishop to c5. Get rid of that bishop. And after bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop. It's a very unbalanced position. I still have good attacking chances on the queen side. And at least this way, I'm covering my d5 pawn. I'm one pawn down, losing another pawn. I know it's fun, but unfortunately... It's not good enough. Two pawns. I've got to checkmate him, otherwise I'm going to lose the game. So after rook a6, he took on d5. And here I played another mistake. I probably should bail out now. Something like knight takes d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5. And, you know, the game goes on. Okay, I think white should be okay here. Because he's opened up the e file for his rook, which gives him counterplay. he got to avoid taking on d5 here, because I have the crafty queen to c4, threatening a rook and checkmate on a2. But as long as he avoids that trick, I think white's chances are okay. But okay, I'm in the game. I have some open files. The game goes on. I play queen to a5 straight away. You know, all in, who dares wins, all that kind of rubbish. Um, it didn't definitely didn't win the game here, because uh, after queen to b1... Um, Oh, it's, it's, it's not clear what I do now. I can't take on d5 because my bishop's hanging on e7. I continue throwing pieces at him, but my opponent just can't be, just took everything without a fear in the world. And I played another mistake here. I should play bishop takes c3. I played f takes e6. Bishop takes c3 is unclear. Um, he's got to avoid taking on e7 check here. This is actually a losing mistake here, probably. I mean, uh, for example, I go king takes. And the reason this is a losing mistake it will become clear in a second. Let's say he goes b takes c3. And uh, if you just spend a second looking at this position, there's a nice little tactic here. If my king was still on g8, this tactic wouldn't work. Uh, but my king is now on f7. So the move I can play is rook to b8, exclamation mark. You can't go queen takes b8 because I go queen takes a2 checkmate. So here I win the queen. If my king was still on g8, he'd go queen takes rook checkmate. So a good little move that one. Um, so this is what I should play. So after b takes c3, um, he should play. Well, he should play b takes c3 instead of e takes f7. And then I just continue e to f takes e6. And this I'd still be quite happy in this position as black. Okay, I'm a pawn down, but he's, he's shattered his queen side pawn structure. My knight's coming to d5 with pressure on c3. I quite fancy my chances here still. Very unbalanced position. But I didn't play that move. I should have shattered his queen side pawns. Definitely the move to play. Instead, I played pawn takes e6. A bit of a dodgy move here. Gives him time to move his bishop to d4. A very good defensive move. The bishop's doing very well on d4. Defends c3. Gives extra protection to b2. Also ready to start a counter attack against my knight. I went knight to d7. The idea of e5. Rook on d e3. And now I played rook to c4. Throwing every piece at him. Attacking his bishop. Rook to d1. 
And here, I've, I, I lashed out with E5, but my position is probably bad anyway. I, can't, I remember at the time I had a long think here. I could see what was coming. Um, but I calculated a very complicated line. Um, but I just missed one move. I missed at a later stage you could take on A2 with check, which looks very unlikely here. But um, we'll see the point of it soon. Okay, let's see. I went E5. Looks like I trap his bishop. He's only got one way out of this. He has to go bishop takes E5. So he's calculated this very well. I play knight takes e5. Now he goes rook to d5, the, the most important move. Otherwise he's a piece down. Rook to d5. That screws on my queen and my knight. I think that's the right word anyway. Screws. It's not, yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I went queen to c7. And here he played another good move. He went knight to b5. He's got to avoid going rook takes e5. Because this loses to rook takes c3. For example b takes c3, bishop takes c3, rook takes c3, queen takes e5, queen to b3, king to h8, and now he's in a lot of trouble here, for example f4, queen check here, rook b6 winning the queen. So a complicated line, if we go back we can see that this is probably probably a mistake here, but knight to b5 is the move to play. Getting more complicated, but the knight comes into the game with effects, and all of a sudden we see how good his queen is on b1. Um, it's quite embarrassing that I lost this, because I mean, I'm playing a queen up most of the game, all my pieces are doing something, but my extra queen doesn't even play, you know, doesn't even take in part, so it's a bit worrying if I can lose, lose the game a queen up in a certain sense. It doesn't make you feel too confident. His queen on b1 just sits there, guards everything, he just uses his two rooks and his knight to beat me. Nice, you know, very fun. But anyway, after this move, it went queen to c6. Um, he's got to take the knight back on e5, now he plays this. And in this position, when I originally played um, e5, I thought I could play rook takes c2, which doesn't work, because knight d4, and now here, remember I was saying about the queen a2 check, I was planning rook takes a2 check. This is my brilliant counter-strike, amazing move. Um, but it's not amazing, because he goes queen takes a2 check. And it's not a very friendly check. Because um, completely lost there. You know, he's winning everything. Um, so that was a move I missed. I mean, it's, it's quite... It Maybe in this position he's got other moves. He might even be able to go rook to e8 check here. Um, so, I mean, probably my calculation is all a bit messed up anyway. But in the game, I suddenly realised there's a little trouble here. Um, he's short and tired, so I, I just punted some moves in this position. But... Uh, like I said earlier on, I'm three pawns down, I've run out of steam, nothing, you know, the only way I'm going to win is if he, if he blunders here. Uh, I went bishop c5, and I went rook to b3, guarding his knight on b5, stopping me taking his rook on e3, and I went rook to a5, but the queen, the game quickly finished after knight to c3, I blundered here, just a stupid blunder, I should have tried bishop b4, I went bishop d4. And now, after he took my rook on a5, my face went right red. And to help things out, it was on a demo board, so probably um, there's about 40, 50 people wondering what I was doing here. Um, and I thought the only way to get over this was to blitz out my next two in a, in a, in a glush of glory. But uh, he doesn't have to take this rook on c3, he just ignores it. Okay, he takes it once, okay, but after this move, he just ignores it. I mean, pawn takes c3 leads to a draw after queen takes c3, queen b2, queen here check, blah, 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 blah. But he doesn't do that. After bishop takes c3, he just plays rook to a3. And the game finished. Bit to f6, rook to d3, a5. If I get my pawn to a3 and my queen to b4, I'd probably still be losing, so it's, it's not really that good. C3, A4, A3, and it was time to resign here. He's made the 40th move, and it'd only be an embarrassment to play on in this position. So that was, a, that was an annoying move. That was my only loss of the tournament. Um, what I'd normally do to recover from a loss like that is, um, well, go down the pub and get absolutely drunk, which is not really a very good sportsman way of doing things, but... It's kind of um, kind of my therapeutic Buddhist way of dealing with the situation, you know. Get drunk, get it out of your brain, and worry about other things. I do feel sorry for my girlfriend and the people around me when I lose a game, because I have to put up with my uh, moodiness, so I apologise here for that. Um, just one of those things you have to do, I'm afraid. But um, yes, um, luckily after this game, I came back with a roll of wins, which we 